Okay, everybody. So I'm in my car right now and we're driving through town. Sorry about the uh, way the camera looks, but if I have it in horizontal position, it doesn't look the same. It, it, it gets too much of the hood. But uh, what I want to do is go to the cemetery that I had an experience in, man, how long ago was this? We're probably talking almost 20 years ago. And uh, what happened, I'm going to tell you this now to save time for when I get there, is that uh, I went in there to look at a house. It was just before I bought my house. And there was a house that was being repaired on the side of the cemetery. And I wasn't aware that it wasn't going to be for sale. Somebody had already purchased it. But there were no signs. And I just saw them working on it. So I went in there. I looked around. I wasn't even doing paranormal investigating. I didn't have a radio with me. I had nothing. And um, I looked at the house. I looked through the windows. Um, I might have walked through the cemetery a little bit wasn't an issue for me thought it was kind of cool actually but upon getting back into my vehicle and pulling out into the street by the time I got about a quarter mile down the road I noticed that all the electric in the car just started going haywire my window rolled down by itself um, when I got to the end of the road and hit my blinker <laughs> my horn beeped when I beat my horn you know, by that time, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So I beat my horn, and my window would roll down. I hit my windshield, my my, uh, my turning signals, and my windshield wipers would go on. It was insane. So <laughs> I said, nobody's going to believe this. So I went to my mother's house. I picked her up, and I said, look at this. This is incredible. I told her where I just was, and I think I picked up something at the cemetery. And all the same stuff was happening to her. So she's like, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go back to the cemetery. And, and I had no idea about investigating. I had no idea about, I mean, I knew about ghosts. I'd seen things, you know, growing up. But I had no, I guess, no schooling, no knowledge of, of what to do with this spirit. I said, I'm going to go back to the cemetery and I'm going to tell it it has to go home. <laughs> so we did that. We went back to the cemetery and I told it it had to go home. It had to stay here. It, it didn't belong with me. And uh, we left. I dropped her off, and everything was running great. Every, every problem that I had was fixed. So after I dropped my mother off and I went home, I got ready for work. I got into my car again, and I could smell electrical. So I thought my radio was burning up. So I... You know, I proceeded to uh, drive to work and I rolled my window down and the whole mechanism burned out. Now, I guess to debunk it, you could say that I had an electrical problem, but it doesn't make sense that when I beat my horn, my windshield wipers went on, that when I hit my turning signals, my horn would beat. None of that makes sense for a simple $40 part that went into my door. <laughs> so. I think it was a uh, paranormal experience for sure. I ended up going to the junkyard. In those days, you could go to the junkyard and you could pull parts. And I pulled the part, you know, for 20, 25 bucks. And all it was was a clip, and I clipped it back in, and everything worked again. I never had another issue with that vehicle. So that's the story of that. And I am pulling up to the cemetery now. I'm going to go in and we're going to do a short session. Okay. This is the old cemetery. This has been around a while. And I'm going to, I don't know where to park. There's really nowhere to park. It's just like a, a straight runway and everything is off to the left and to the right. So let me get this off the holster and we'll start it again. Okay, there will be a little bit of noise because I'm right by the road and I'm in AM mode. Over there is the house that I looked at. So I'm going to walk over here nonchalantly. I don't think anybody's home. If you guys remember one of the sessions that I did at the shop when I read the history, Dowd was one of those guys that came through. He was, um, Mr. Dowd was, Mr. Dowd, was that you? Yeah. 
I believe he owned the printing press or he owned the newsroom. I can't remember. But we had a picture of Mr. Dowd in there. And I actually saw him when I came here to uh, film the, uh, the trees. When I took the uh, drone and I went up on the trees, I saw his name. I was like, hey, imagine that. But what I want to do right now is ask the spirits here if any are here about the day that I pulled up to that house and looked at the home. And somebody jumped into my car and followed me and caused quite the stir with my electronics in my car. Does anybody here remember that? Does anybody remember when I came here and looked at that home? Who was it that jumped in my vehicle with me and followed me around and ruined my electronics? Can I get your name, please? I'm going to switch to F and I'm going to ask the same questions. Okay, Spears, I'm going to ask the same questions. We're on another mode. I hope you can still talk to me. I asked the question who it was that followed me home one day when I was here and ruined the electronics in my vehicle. What's your name? Director. And why did you do that? Was it a, was it a joke or were you angry? You know you're lucky I didn't get that house over there. I would have been in here every night bothering you. <laughs> every day. So that was just one question I had. And the only question I had. I don't know if that spirit hangs around here or if he's attached to that house. Can you tell me if you're attached to the house? Yes or no? Were you protecting your property? Either way, you know I was no threat to you, so I just wanted to come back and, and ask that question. So I thank you for your time. And I'll go home and I'll listen to this and I'll see what I got. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Vincenzo, Cindy, Jasper, and Lewis for following. And they are my buffer between my world and theirs because I want to go into a place and feel like I'm threatened by something that doesn't want me there. And everybody should do that. You should all be in touch with your guides or your spirit friends, whoever you have that you think that you can trust, you know that you can trust. Ask them to help you when you're doing stuff like this because it ain't no fun when you get something nasty attached to you. And it will happen, it can happen, and it does happen. Isn't that right, spirits? So thank you guys. This is the end of the session. Goodbye. Don't fall, did they say? I won't fall. Okay, I'm going to go down here. We're going to turn around. I'm going to keep you guys with me while I turn around and get out of here. This looks like a clear lot. My girlfriend's brother 
lives over there on that side. We're gonna make sure everything in this vehicle works at the least. Don't fuck with it. <laughs> All right, goodbye spirits. You must stay back. You're not allowed to follow. Thank you. Let's turn on the blinker. So far the blinker's working. And I realize that could have been some freak thing and, and that spirit is probably not here. And if he is, he's probably attached to that home. That's that's what I think, if anything. So that's my seatbelt, sorry. So I've stopped and started this video a few, three or four times just because of the time limit on it. And uh, everything seems to be working properly. I think we're okay. So that's the end of this uh, little experiment. You guys have a good day. Goodbye. Goodbye, spirits. Thank you.